the NERC group. First, keep your microphones and the camera off. Then if you have any questions, you can ask our speakers after his presentation. I have great pleasure of welcoming Professor Tevin. Tevin is a professor and a PhD director for accounting at the University of Tevin is, is the president of the British Accounting and Finance Association, BAFA, and the president of African Accounting and Finance Association. Tevin research focuses on the interplay between accounting, accountability, and governance, and his work considers diverse empirical settings, such as companies in developing emerging economics, mainly in African settings, corporate foundations, non governmental. Uh, organization uh, and high and higher education institutes. Her work has been founded by CIMA, Leadership Foundations for Higher Education, uh, Mauritius Research Council, and World Bank. He has published. He has published in the top ranking journals such as Accounting, Editing, and Accountability Journal. Critical Perspective on Accounting, Accounting and Business Research, Accounting Forum, International Journal uh, of Accounting, and the Journal of Business Ethics. He is an Associate Editor of Sustainability Accounting, Management and the Policy Journal, Editorial Board Member uh, of uh, Accounting Forum, uh, journal, uh, journal, of Inter journal, of, uh, journal of Accounting in Emerging Economics, and Journal of public public uh, budgeting, accounting and the finance uh, and, and financial management. Now we will start our seminar with Professor Kevin. OK, uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much for the uh, introduction. Uh, I, I'm very pleased to be here and uh, I will I will soon start my my slide. Uh, uh, it's a great pleasure uh, to, for the invitation. And uh, as I, I mentioned by the speak about the uh, uh, organizers, I would try to speak for about about 40 minutes. I'll try to keep it to 40 minutes and uh, and then we can have questions. In an ideal world, I would prefer to speak less and have more questions, but I, because of the system, I think that's the best way to do this. So I'm going to be sharing my screen now and uh, and I look forward to your comments and questions afterwards, of course. Uh, so I'll so basically, I mean, I'm coming from I hope you can see my slides. I hope uh, and uh, I, I know people can make comments in the chat box, uh, but I will I will probably also try to to comment on those once once I'm done. So I, 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 I I'm, I'm coming today, although I have uh, several hats uh, and, and greetings from from uh, University of Essex, uh, greetings from the British Accounting and Finance Association and also greetings, obviously, uh, from the African Accounting and Finance Association. Uh, because obviously I'm, I'm, I'm talking about Africa, uh, the, the main identity, if you want, of the main, uh, 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 um, the main aspect that I want to talk about uh, is, is around Africa. So that's why I'm talking more in my capacity as the president of the African Accounting and Finance Association. So I will try to talk um, when I spoke to the organizers and Mohammed, and, and I, I tried to, to try to get a, a sense of giving you a, a broad picture, uh, my own reflections uh, of on research in Africa uh, generally. So I'm not I'm not discussing specific papers or papers that I have been working on or I'm still working on with various colleagues, but but I'm talking on a general picture. I will uh, occasionally make reference to some of my work and some of my papers already published. Uh, to, to give examples uh, where I'm going uh, in terms of my explanation. So, so I want to make sure that, that my main focus is, is not so much about going into one paper, but rather giving an overall picture of what I, what I perceive as, as accounting uh, research in, in the African context. Uh, so that's, that's what I'm going to, to do. So you, this is my program. Um, as you can see also, I've put some links at the bottom for the African Accounting and Finance Association, and I'll explain a bit more what, what we do and what we can do as well, uh, if you are interested. OK, now as accounting, it is, it is probably from a point of researching and studying accounting, it is probably one, um, in, in spite of what is going on at the moment, there were difficult circumstances, 
it is probably one of the interesting decades to be researching accounting because accounting has now taken a, a kind of, of relevance in different, different uh, situations. So that's what I'm trying to show in that slide here is that we started with accounting uh, as a as a sort of uh, basic double entry system. You know, we, we know accounting in its in its in its basic double entry system. But now we are talking more about accounting, not only from a financial, but also from an issue of social uh, as well as environmental. Um, accounting also now is much more dynamic uh, in things such as in, in sectors such as the government uh, sector. Uh, so accounting may be seen as a private sector practice and many people study it as a private sector practice, but it's actually coming quite, quite important as well in the government sector as well as the charity sector. So, I mean, this is just a, a few examples. What I'm trying to say is that accounting in, in terms of where it goes and where it, 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 it focuses is, is much more. And of course, uh, we cannot forget that uh, when it comes to uh, a current situation, uh, COVID-19 has kind of uh, covered all these different aspects. COVID-19 is a uh, is taken over a little bit our mind and our and our lives and and and, and obviously and, and being very very sad news for many of us uh, losing family friends and and, and 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 you know and also other livelihoods uh, as well. So accounting is even connected to that because in in, in many ways. So so here's a in a sense uh, a kind of idea that I want to propose about accounting research as well. It's not just about company private sector you know double entry type. Uh, uh, aspects. Anyway, so that's my about kind of a starting point. Uh, the the other um, um, point is to present my own my, myself very briefly. So, in case you're wondering, I am from uh, Mauritius. Uh, I um, I'm, I'm UK based training. I was uh, I did a masters and then did a PhD in the UK and finished my PhD in the UK and and obviously been been an academic uh, for some time. Uh, I think 16 years, I think, if I count properly. And, and what I want to also uh, put forward is that I started uh, many, many of us probably in the African context uh, where we started researching. We're starting researching accounting very much in a quantitative, positivist, objectivist approach. You know? So we see accounting as an objective aspect and, and quantitatively, you know, uh, using statistics, using a quantitative uh, approaches to accounting. So this is where I started too. you know, started uh, 2000, uh, you know, uh, 1997 in academia and in, in my own country. And we were very much into that angle. Uh, so also um, my discussions today are, are based on about 10 years involvement. So we started the African Accounting and Finance Association very much uh, like an African version of a British Accounting and Finance Association. So we use the same model and uh, to develop an African based association for accounting an academic association. And uh, so I have been involved in that uh, organization for nearly 10 years in various capacities until that I'm now president uh, for two years as the president. So so I'm talking from my kind of experience, uh, working, talking, discussing, attending the conferences in Africa. And so I'm talking from that perspective. Also, uh, whilst in the UK, we also have a special interest group uh, in the UK called Accounting and Finance in Emerging Economies. And that is founded at Essex University. And uh, so that's also uh, coming from that angle, Emerging Economies uh, Research. Uh, Probably those who don't know, Essex Accounting Center is 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 a very very much. Um, it's not just me. There's, there's there's 28 people now from Essex Accounting Center from different parts of the world, including Africa, uh, that we research on on issues. And my comments today. So I want to put some caveats, some 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 kind of a disclaimer here. I'm, I'm talking about my own experience working with a network of researchers in Africa and outside Africa. You know, uh, from the diaspora. Uh, I'm not trying to do a literature review here, so I'm not trying to cover all the work that has been done in Africa, uh, which is done by African based academics as well as academics based outside Africa. So I please I, I want to apologize in advance if, if I'm not if I have forgotten someone, if I've not mis mistakenly not mentioned everyone in, in my in my this is not meant to be 
a comprehensive uh, review of, of African accounting research, but rather just what I feel is, 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 is my own experience of what I see here. Uh, so you, you take it as it is, you know, maybe I missed something and I, I'll, I'll take I'll, I'll take my apologies for that. Um, so where does that start? I mean, my own position at the end, as you can see, my last part is that I, I started to realize after that starting my research uh, in 1997 that there's a, a need to go beyond traditional accounting research. What I call traditional is what what many of us uh, have started with, you know, uh, quantitative uh, statistical type studies of accounting and and started to ask more detailed questions, uh, research questions. And I think that's where one of the challenges is, 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 is to push the boundaries of that research. Uh, so, so in a sense, what I'm trying to say is many of us are interested in knowing what is going on. OK, we are all interested in knowing what what is going on, but we have also to spend a lot of time thinking, why is this going on? You know, why? What, what is going on? Why do we have accounting operating in this way? And also the why? Why do we have so many difficulties uh, in the public sector? Why do we have so many difficulties with corporate governance? Why do we have difficulties, uh, you know, uh, we're seeing major issues in company settings? The why makes us also go back and say, but what is going on in the accounting? What is what is going on in the accounting as well? So. So this is what I can I can try to set forward here in terms of the overall arching of my own position, what, what I'm trying to research here. And of course, um, when I talk about Africa, I, I it's important to say that Africa is not is, is, a, is a, obviously a beautiful continent, a massive continent. And of course, it is not one one set of settings. You know, it's it's multiple settings. So Africa is not is not one like uh, I don't know. Uh, England or, 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 or to some extent, you know, France or whatever. It is it is much more. And and therefore, when I'm talking about accounting research uh, and, and how can we contribute to to the broader understanding of accounting, uh, not just in Africa, but in other countries, we have to accept that that there are various uh, segments, various parts. And as a president of accounting, uh, African Accounting Association, we I'm very well aware of that, you know, that there are differences in, in how we see it. We've got, uh, in a sense, a general idea that North Africa uh, is kind of uh, uh, connected very much to a Middle East, uh, Arabic kind of cultural aspects. Uh, some are Anglophone, some are Francophone. So we know there are differences there. Uh, there is also on pretty well it's on the west and central side we've got francophone sub-saharan africa so people uh people are basically uh, obviously not only just speaking french but also systems and accounting systems are also influenced uh, still now by some element of of french uh systems and, and francophone uh systems uh, we have also Anglo Sub-Saharan Africa with many shapes and sizes. So we've got large countries that are Anglophone. Many of them eff effectively, uh, many of them are, are, are ex-British colonies uh, and, and also reacting from that, from that perspective. We also have South Africa as a, as a very uh, strong economic powerhouse uh, traditionally. Uh, uh, at one level. So when we're talking of accounting research, I hope you can see that obviously I'm not talking about accounting research as Africa as a whole, but there, there are very sim similar elements to it. And, and we have many economic powerhouses, you know, larger countries on the African continent, which actually uh, drive perhaps uh, what we are doing. So, you know, that, so that's also important. And probably uh, in, a, in a rather, and I forgot to mention, there's also, uh, uh, you know, uh, other countries like Angola and Mozambique that are, you know, not necessarily coming from an Anglophone setting, uh, nor a Francophone setting, uh, but also, uh, you know, uh, uh, having their own differences and 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 and, and uh, peculiarities. And lastly, perhaps just as a joke, in case you're wondering, uh, Mauritius is where the arrow finishes. So I haven't got a dot there, but you can imagine where the arrow is. That's where Mauritius is, roughly. And, and obviously Mauritius is part of the political and economic aspects of Africa, but it's an island economy. Uh, so in, in many ways, I, I, you know, we consider Mauritius a kind of unusual 
uh, unusual part of, 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 of the whole setting here. So that's what, what I want to talk about. You know, when we talk of Africa, I'm not saying there's one Africa. There's, there's, as you can see, there's about six to seven Africas that we can talk about. And uh, this is the, the sort of going in a slightly more general view again of how accounting research from Africa, where's the accounting research from Africa? If we, if we focus on the so-called uh, top journals, if we focus on the so-called top journals uh, and, 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 and the statistics are probably not so surprising uh, for many of us uh, that, that, you know, if we look at some statistics that Anglophone sub-Saharan Africa is, is research on accounting is about 0.89% of the top tier journals. Uh, you know, so and, and the majority of them were from South Africa. So, so even when you have African based uh, or African uh, researchers, they're not, they're not, they're not necessarily uh, coming from a wide range of countries, but rather coming from very few countries. The second uh, chapter we did uh, recently alongside a number of my colleagues here uh, is that again we found that uh, using the ABDC list, the Australian uh, list of journals, accounting journals, I'm, I'm emphasizing the word accounting journals, uh, A star, A and Bs, then out of nearly 13,000, nearly close to 13,000 articles, only 159 were on developing countries. And out of that, only 15%, so 15%, so if I'm, if I'm getting my numbers right, it's about 200 and a bit, you know, 15%, even less than, uh, than, than, than that, uh, you know, are, are coming from Africa. And the top three countries that publish uh, these papers are, are South Africa in order, South Africa, Egypt, and, and Nigeria. So, so you can see, from the from a certain you know it's not a complete list of course from a from a from a kind of a top perspective of accounting journals accounting research barely gets through uh, although it is not a totally negative story it is increasing but it is it is still at a very very small uh, proportion of 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 the whole accounting scholarship so how can we contribute of course there is therefore on one hand this looks a very uh, pessimistic picture on the other hand, it means it's a very optimistic picture because it means as people who are working in Africa, uh, researching in Africa, whether it's North Africa or South Africa or anywhere, there's a great potential to, to develop, uh, to, to bring contributions that are not only important uh, from the point of view of, of, of one country, but rather of relevance to, to literature, accounting literature across, across the world. Okay. Uh, so that's that's a, a good story, uh, in a sense. Although it, the statistics may look they look quite uh, uh, bleak. Uh, my own experience again, again we've organised conferences uh, from 2011, and on average we don't have many papers. We get about 70 papers presented, the common person to present it, and and this gives you an idea of what we observe from accounting researchers in Africa. So accounting researchers in Africa. Uh, tend to be 85 to 90 percent quantitative methods. Uh, IFRS, our good friend IFRS is, is the most uh, kind of very often researched. Uh, corporate governance, uh, CSR, uh, auditing. Then, then as we go down the list, this becomes virtually, uh, uh, virtually very little. Uh, public sector accounting is starting to pick up because public sector is an important sector uh, you know, uh, state-owned uh, organizations as well. They are important sectors in in our in our, in the continent. So, so public sector accounting is picking up. Accounting education is quite uh, quite uh, noticeable. Management accounting research has has virtually disappeared from from the conference. I mean, I, 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 probably one or two or three papers we get uh, around around uh, around management accounting uh, in Africa. And as for accounting history, then, you know, I better not say it, it, it it's basically one or zero uh, in terms of accounting history. And whereas there is possibly uh, a lot of uh, potential here to, to study a bit more about how, how accounting over time has developed in, in, in Africa. Uh, the challenges uh, that we've noticed, uh, you know, uh, lots of challenges around the use of questionnaires, uh, you know, lots of challenges around sample size and number of respondents. You know, it's clear that countries may be big, but economic uh, uh, actors, economic uh, organizations 
are small or, or at least concentrated. So the, the possibility of doing a large scale study, uh, you know, statistically representative and so on and so forth is, is, is problematic. It, at, at the start, a, a problematic uh, proposition already. Uh, and reliance on classical agency and contingency theory. Uh, now we see, of course, more and more people coming to research around interview and documentary research. So starting to emerge that perhaps maybe switching from a quantitative uh, positivistic type of accounting to a sort of study of accounting research on a qualitative basis may be useful. They have their own contributions to make. Uh, certainly may not targeting the same journal, you know, uh, not necessarily going to be able to publish in a top quantitative oriented journal, but can be published in a top qualitative type journal. So there is a, uh, there is a, some starting changes. I mean, some departments, some, some people that I know personally uh, in various parts of East Africa, uh, Tanzania, uh, Ghana, um, and uh, you know South Africa. They are there's a starting to be a, a development of a work around qualitative work uh, uh, because this is this is an, I think this is an advantage in, in in some way. And to also mention that anything to do with financial databases and reliability of those uh, was always never easy. Um, so it's improving now. The level, the quality of the data of the databases is improving in the African uh, setting. But it does still remain problematic, you know, and, and there's a paper there that, that does talk a little bit about the problem of uh, by Chris Nobes, a very well known uh, researcher in, in financial accounting, international financial accounting and, and talking about the, the difficulties of research uh, uh, using data. So I hope I hope I hope I've managed to kind of set the scene uh, in terms of a general idea of what I think accounting research is, uh, but also uh, could be, you know, so I'm not going to perhaps to, to, to kind of set out a little bit more in detail what it also could be uh, or where uh, specific areas of the literature in accounting where there is potential perhaps to to go beyond and to make a contribution to the literature uh, uh, basically. So that's that's what I'm going to do. Uh, right. Um, so Possibly um, for, for the benefit, I, I put this slide mainly, mainly for the benefit of, of trying to say, look, there are two ways to look at accounting. I mean, um, there are many ways actually, but let, let's, let's kind of simplify this at that point. There's, there's two ways. There's the traditional approach of accounting as a technique, as a technology that is here to provide information. So. Of course, there are more recent definitions than the American Accounting Association, 1966. But I just want to make the point that if I mentioned to my students today uh, in accounting, they will still see that yes, this is what accounting is about. It's identifying, measuring, and communicating information to users. Uh, but now we know that even in traditional perspectives of accounting, uh, people accept that our accounting and financial reporting is only also not not economic it's also non-financial type of reporting okay so there's also other things coming out now like carbon emissions climate change all the other things as well are part of accounting but it is still a technology it is still a practice okay so that is the traditional approach uh, what i'm trying to say the traditional approach is that accounting is a technology that communicates an objective reality that communicates an objective piece of information Maybe now when we talk of objective reality, we're not just talking about profit. We're also talking about carbon emissions. We're also talking about, you know, uh, how we deal with our suppliers, but it is still an attempt to project an objective reality. OK, and there are many reasons, very rational reasons for doing that. So, of course, um, IFRS is, is, is the, probably the, the most known abbreviation in, in accounting, you know, IF, everyone knows about IFRS and, and there's many, many, many studies around understanding the adoption of IFRS. OK, many, many studies. And I've put some examples of papers myself and others. And I uh, and I, again, I apologize if I missed anyone. <laughs> there was there was bound to be hundreds of people working in IFRS and I don't want to play uh, to, to make, uh, you know, uh, a rough justice is that there's many, many more people. But just to give you an idea that What's happening now, I think, is is to accept that accounting for IFRS 
we are now going beyond the mere idea of adoption. We are not, we're not so, I mean, there's more and more countries adopting, which is fine. Uh, you know, it comes with its criticisms and its, and its advantages. But also, what are the debates about the actual implementation of it? So a country, many countries say they tick the box and they've adopted um, IFRS. But actually, uh, when we look at the company accounts, when we look at what's going on in these countries, it's far, far varied. There's a lot more variation that's going on. So we're not really understanding the bottom, uh, at the bottom, uh, you know, uh, what's the right way, the grassroots. We're not understanding at the bottom of the environment what's going on with, with IFRS, okay? So at one level, when we measure statistically what's going on, we get a result. But when we look at what's going at the bottom, we have a different idea, okay? So uh, probably research would be good here to, to look at specific standards, you know, challenges that countries and, and companies in Africa may have with specific standards of IFRS. Uh, let's say lease accounting, uh, financial instruments, uh, pension accounting, you know, complex types of accounting standards that do not necessarily work that easily in, in, in particular settings. So studying a standard rather than studying, let's say, uh, discretionary accruals or earnings management, you know, these larger type of conceptualization, broader types of conceptualizations, but rather looking at, at specific aspects, specific issues around it. And the first paper, by the way, here is an example of that, you know, looking at, at IFRS, IFRS 3 in particular, looking at one standard. And there's not many of that. There's not many of those studies, I would say. Uh, then we move on, as I said, accounting, uh, uh, reporting and accounting has gone beyond financial, beyond financial. And, and we need to be proud that I think in Africa, there has been some major attempts to improve the quality of reporting uh, beyond financial, so non-financial reporting. So, of course, I'm sure you know about integrated reporting, which is very much uh, a South African attempt. A, not necessarily a success, but an attempt at improving uh, the, quali the, 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 the kind of broadening the level of reporting. Okay, there's GRI, Global Reporting Initiative. And so, and, and there are some very specific ones. Um, in case you may not know, they, they, there's something called Black Economic Empowerment in South Africa, and companies have to report on it. Uh, HIV AIDS, when, at the time where there was serious uh, 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 tr transmission of HIV AIDS across parts of sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, there was a standard to make companies report on how they would, they would deal, they would help treat, help deal with a problem with the HIV AIDS infections in their companies. So, so there is some, some sort of a very speci specific African type uh, types of, of information that our companies providing that do not exist outside of Africa. And so these are types of contributions that you can uh, provide to the literature that is beyond simply financial accounting, okay? And they can be very well rated in, in good journals because this is new, no, no one's heard of it. Uh, so you can see some work around, I've done myself, uh, but, but for example, now we're talking about COVID-19. And we know in Africa or in many countries in general, the government response will not be sufficient. You know, whatever the government will try to do, uh, COVID-19 will, will, will require responsibility from, uh, from companies as well. So why not, I think, uh, in the current context, why not how companies report on their uh, responses to COVID-19, how they're going to make COVID, uh, how they're going to make their business and employees and customers safe in relation to COVID-19. So I would expect soon uh, some sort of reporting will start uh, across the world around companies' responses to COVID-19. Uh, in the same way as I'm, I'm talking about HIV AIDS paper, you know, HIV AIDS disclosure that happened uh, some time ago. So this is uh, some, some unique possibilities of, of making a contribution to the literature here, uh, what, what I'm trying to put forward here. Okay, I hope I hope I'm I'm doing okay so far. I've gone too fast, uh, but there's a, there's a quite a number of slides. So I you know I'm 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 sure I'm, I'm I'll be ready to come back to some of these slides if you are, if I wasn't very clear or I didn't I kind of missed uh, 
uh, uh, some, some crucial points. Uh, then organizational reporting is not just about companies, okay? Africa is not just about companies. We, accounting is not just about companies. There are many, many other type of institutions that have reporting requirements or at least do report uh, uh, financially or non-financially. So I think there's a, although there is research around these sectors, it's still very, very, very limited. It's still very, very limited. There's very limited information. There are some papers uh, published in some journals uh, but not not a lot. So I, I encourage again uh, researchers who are interested in in in, in finding a, an original contribution is to look at non-company settings like uh, non-governmental organisations, uh, municipalities, local authorities, government accounting. Uh, colleagues and I are just finalising a paper on on how. Uh, a sample of government accounts are prepared. You know, what is provided in the government accounts? Why is it, uh, are they following uh, right disclosure practices? You know, so we're looking at government accounting rather than uh, corporate accounting. And, uh, and finally, sustainable development goals is becoming also a very new uh, issue in, in around the world. And, and many companies are already uh, starting to report around whether their activities and their social activities are more towards sustainable development goals reporting. And Carol Adams, who's the editor of, of uh, the journal, I mean, associate editor of uh, uh, Sustainability Accounting and Management Policy Journal, SAMPJ, it's an Emerald Journal. And Carol Ad Adams is, is, is working front on that, on that work on SDG reporting for companies. So a, a new standard for reporting about a sustainable development goals. So these are all, uh, I, hope, I hope it's, uh, it, it's kind of useful to just kind of throw some yeah. ideas around, around, uh, around how we could improve our, uh, our research contribution from an African setting not only about Africa, but to contribute to the wider literature. So, as I said, I think I think there's a lot, lot to lot done so far. Uh, people, um, many people that I know on the African setting have engaged with accounting research. OK, but I think there's more to be done uh, around these things. I think there's more to be done. There's more possibilities uh, there. Uh, these are just examples of of what I think has been achieved in some way, uh, uh, has been done in some way, but now we have to consider the next level, if you want, or we have to consider where we can improve our, our contributions, because we are reaching this point, you know, we are reaching this, this, this situation at the very end here. I'm not going into the details of what I've put in the slides here, but I just want to get to the end uh, here. But the challenge of coming up with statistical generalization and a convincing contribution that is incremental to mainstream international findings. OK, so, for example, many people want to study corporate governance and performance or whether uh, CSR reporting uh, is, is uh, what type of CSR reporting is going on. But but if we know already something, then how do you say this is a this is a contribution? You know, but many of the results we're finding, statistical results, you know, whether corporate governance does better IFRS or better accounting, we know that. We know that is happening already. So how can we make our research uh, uh, make a convincing contribution, an additional knowledge to uh, to not only Africa but internationally? Okay, and also sometimes. Perhaps to emphasize here, my point here is often I read a paper, a uh, very well uh, statistically uh, prepared paper, let's say about, um, you know, um, IFRS adoption in an African country, any African country. But then the, the paper, the way I read it, it could have been about any country. It could have been about any African country. It could have been about any developing economy. So why is it so important to understand this one? Why is it so important to understand this country and, 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 and IFRS adoption in this country? So then you have to, I think there's not enough use of those unique settings, but perhaps, so, so, so to make your, 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 your research uh, relevant is to set out these unique settings that may be explaining why uh, accounting operates in this way. 
you know so that's that's i think is 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 what i think i would encourage people to kind of reflect on it because if you send a paper that is about um, ifrs adoption in country africa a then people don't see anything new unless we are able to sell say something uh, more specific here right so I'll, i will move on now but i'm sure there'll be more questions about that now, as I said, just to summarize, I, I started by talking about the traditional aspect of accounting, you know, the traditional idea uh, of accounting as an objective uh, measure. And, 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 and it's fine. I know many people tend to research accounting in that way, and that's not, that's not, I'm not debating about, about this. But there's also a more open understanding of accounting. There's a much more uh, idea that accounting is beyond simply accounting in the formal sense, you know, double entry, uh, uh, financial statements, accounting takes, uh, uh, you know, it's about calculations, it's about calculative practices, you know. Uh, if you want an idea of how calculation accounting uh, helps to influence lives and people, uh, you just need the best example is, is how countries report on their COVID-19 infections and, 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 and sad deaths. You know, how they calculate that, how they compute that, how they communicate it to you. So this is about the role of accounting as a, as a, as a, as a way to influence people, as a way to influence the way uh, people think or react to it. OK, so here uh, it's a much more critical sociological understanding of accounting, not a business understanding of accounting. So, so you, you can decide to be on the, the first category or the second category. It's, it's absolutely fine, but it just, it just kind of, uh, giving you the, 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 the kind of possibility to think of accounting beyond what we know already or beyond what is already in the papers, uh, uh, in the articles already. So that's that's what I'm trying to hear. So here, accounting is subjectively constructed. It's not objective. You know, accounting is, is, is not what the accountant tells you. Accounting may be happening in every sort of setting. Uh, accounting may be happening for various reasons, you know. Uh, Accounting may be happening very informally, you know. Uh, uh, we think that people in the, the small street traders in your corner street in Africa don't do accounting. Of course they do accounting, but they don't do accounting the way we learn at the university or the way we learned uh, in, in professional textbook. They also, however, calculate prices. They also calculate costs and they also have an idea of what decision they have to make. OK, so we don't necessarily know enough of that traditional form of accounting, you know, uh, uh, around the world. It's not just Africa, I would say. Around the world, we don't understand that. Also, we know that accounting is used in a political sense. We know not political in the in the party politics sense, but political sense as in to justify action. You know, a decision has been made. Now we have to use accounting to justify it. It's not the other way around. It's not that they use accounting to make a choice, but the choice has been made and they use accounting to, to justify it. OK, so here we, we, we can, it's a much more open ended uh, understanding and critical aspect of accounting. And um, and and I and also, although I may be critical, I, I we also have some positive stories around around accounting. I mean, I have this uh, particular story uh, with my colleague. I mean, uh, uh, um, you know, Philip Lassou, who is the main author on these two papers uh, where we studied, where he studied. Uh, where he found when he went into a, a government department and found how they were trying to address corruption, the new corruption was going on, and how they set up an IT system to, to prevent corruption, to reduce the extent of correction, to improve accounting by themselves, okay? Rather than being told by someone outside from the World Bank or from some developed country how to do accounting, how to do controls, they developed their own solution. So we wanted to hear, it's a kind of a, a good news story, is how people at the grassroots levels, how practitioners at the grassroots levels are developing accounting solutions. And then we have to reveal those accounting solutions to the, to the rest of the world so that people understand that it's not just about borrowing the textbook from America to improve accounting in Africa, uh, but the other way around is also possible. So, so accounting and technology are going to be obviously very well connected. Uh, it's already happening and becoming even more important uh, as the role of IT and accountants are becoming a little bit more uh, connected here. So, so in other words, 
I, I, not only the traditional approach, but what we call the interpretive and critical approach to accounting is, uh, is, is what I would encourage. Because accounting, qualitative accounting, critical accounting, uh, opens a, a, another route of, of providing a contribution to the literature, you know, providing a contribution to the literature around, around what accounting is, you know, how you define uh, how accounting is operating. Not what the textbook says accounting is, but how what is going on in, in the real sense of the word. Uh, so the challenge, tease out what is the new finding, what is the new understanding? We are after a new phenomenon or an understanding of how did we get there? Okay, how did we get there? Um, let me take an example because I know it's been mentioned on, on Facebook, uh, this paper with Peter uh, Gattas on, on, on Egyptian accounting profession. And, and basically, there, there's a lot of literature out there on the accounting profession around the world, how the development of accounting profession, you know. But what we wanted to do in this case was to say, here are the challenges going on in the Egyptian accounting profession today. So today there are challenges around the development of a very well-defined accounting profession, like many accounting professions in Africa, by the way. It's not just an Egyptian, an Egyptian issue. It affects many, many. So when they're trying to become more professionalized, more organized, they hit some problems, they have some regulatory challenges and so on and so forth. OK, so we wanted to say, the, the, how did we get there? How did we have an accounting profession that is like this? Because if we do not understand how we got an accounting profession like this, we won't understand how to progress. So rather than trying to say something around what is going on now, we know what is going on now, but what could have been the reasons we, have, we, have, we are here today? What are the factors in the past that may have caused what we have today? So, so we turn the question, the research question around. We turn it round rather than saying what is on, you know, we know what is going on. The literature knows already what's going on today. We know that accounting is happening in this way. But what we are trying to to hear is to understand the factors or the, the, the context in which in the past this has caused what we have today. Because if we understand the past, as we know, if we understand a little bit about the past, we can improve uh, a little bit the systems in the future. OK, uh, so here's a few papers basically where we, we, we have a more critical and open ended view of accounting research. And it's interesting that that Ashimi, uh, Asashimi, the uh, author of 1997, uh, wrote a very interesting paper around how agency theory, how agency theory as we know it, the Jensen and Meckling uh, idea of agency theory, doesn't apply to African, uh, may, may not apply to many African settings. And from 1997, he wrote that and said agency theory and African, you know, it, 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 it may work, it may not work, it depends, you know. So, so if we now use agency theory in our daily uh, use of accounting research, maybe we need to think and see whether there's something else that we want to, to put forward here. So that, that's basically is around um, accounting uh, issues. I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm going to skip a couple of slides, uh, but you will see it anyway afterwards. I also wanted to make mention a bit about corporate governance, but I'll, I'll, I think it's pretty clear what I wanted to say here. We, African Accounting Association works closely with uh, uh, PAFA, the Pan-African Federation of Accountants, and they are the, 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 the African Federation of Professional Accountants. You know? So all the different bodies of different parts of Africa, they join into this Pan-African Federation and they help uh, fund some research uh, 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 for African academics. But what was interesting and what I want to put here is when we ask them what sort of research, what sort of research themes we would like, you would like academics to study, so we didn't tell them, they told us, OK, these are the things we thought accounting accountants in practice would be interested in. And, and you can see, uh, if you go very quickly through this, that many, many, many things in there we are barely touching upon as academics in accounting. We, we, maybe because we don't know enough about it, maybe we don't have the data for it uh, also, but certainly these are, I think, interesting uh, practitioner oriented questions and ideas that could be open for African researchers uh, to consider. OK, so that, that's what I wanted to highlight here. Uh, so I'm going to conclude. I'm, I'm nearly done with my presentation. I'm a few minutes uh, late to what I expected, 
But I, I, am, I just want to talk about the African Accounting Association because uh, this is a Pan-African Accounting Association. So we try to cover all aspects of Africa. Uh, we created in Ghana in 2011 and moved to Nigeria. We've gone to Tanzania. We've gone to South Africa. We've gone to Senegal, Mauritius, uh, Kenya, uh, uh, Uganda. So we've, bought, we've been to many, many countries and we were meant, obviously, which is what the sad situation is. We were supposed to be in Cairo uh, in September this year. We were supposed to be working with uh, University of Cairo, uh, Faculty of Commerce, to, to run the conference uh, in, in Egypt. Unfortunately, we, we, we have to cancel like everyone else. Uh, so we are hoping to do that conference again in Cairo, uh, because personally, I would like to come and see the, the, the pyramids uh, in 2021. And uh, also, but instead, uh, I just wanted to mention that we're running an online uh, early career colloquium, PhD and early career colloquium uh, at the start of September. And we are open at the moment for submissions until the 31st of July. So if you're a PhD student, you can submit an abstract. If you are a, an early career, you can submit a full paper. And this is reviewed and discussed. Uh, uh, we're going to do it on, on, on Zoom uh, at the start of September. So, so here's uh, the link. And uh, I think I'm going to ask my, my uh, organizers if they can circulate information uh, about it. Uh, so I, I, would, I would really obviously hope that uh, from a Pan-African perspective that uh, you can join and work uh, collaboratively. I mean, that's what the association is, is to encourage African accounting research within Africans, not just between Africa and US and Europe and UK, but between Africans themselves and try to find some better solutions for the future uh, as well. OK, so that, that's, uh, I think, basically my my uh, my final slide. This is uh, my idea building in Essex, which I haven't seen for four months now. And I hope uh, I hope to go back uh, to it in, in, in due course. OK, I'm going to stop now and open up for questions. Uh, Mohamed, is that OK? Yeah, thank you very much, Dear.